I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. I'm here in the Panasonic Creative Studio with Rick Garrity, a uh, longtime Panasonic Lumineer. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian. Nice to be here. Uh, Rick, tell me how you got started in taking photographs. Well, I started a long time ago, so I mean, obviously you can see I wear my age. Um, I started with uh, view cameras, with big film cameras, and then transitioned my way in. Uh, Panasonic actually has uh, been a client of mine since 1983. What kind of pictures do you take? Are you an Ansel Adams kind of guy? Are you a lifestyle guy? Um, you know, I'm a commercial advertising photographer for my real work. I want to say that, you know, uh, big clients, Panasonic being one of them, uh, BMW, uh, Audi, different, different companies like that that I work for. But then the, the Luminary program allows me to be myself and go out and create content on different subjects that are, that are more interesting to the general public rather than uh, the, like the commercial world. And who's your audience? Uh, you've built the community over time. You know, who's looking at your pictures? Um, Majority of people, a lot of travel photographers. I do, I do uh, workshops around the country, and, and some uh, with a partner of mine in Costa Rica. And it's a, uh, it's it's a nice way of sharing your work and and showing people how to make better photographs. And uh, between the travel pictures and, and unusual portraits uh, for people around the country on, on old Route 66 in small mining towns, you find some really interesting people that have a really cool story to tell. What's one of those cool stories? Like maybe what's one of your favorite places to shoot? Well, I got to say, uh, out here in Vegas, uh, there's a town that's about an hour and a half south of here on 93, and it's called Chloride, Arizona. Chloride, Arizona has 260 people little tiny very desolate mining town about five or six miles off the road uh, the people there are just great and I go in and um, photograph them and uh, you know have breakfast with them and hang out and they're just a real interesting crew and the town is just you have to see it to believe it it's like an episode of Twilight Zone Stepping into a time that absolutely, it's a everyone's time forgot. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Uh, give us some tips and tricks. So, you know, maybe a lot of people who watch this are going to be uh, new to photography, new to video. Give us some of your photography best hacks, best tips and tricks. Well, you know, I mean, the, the biggest thing is is to, to not, not be so interested in listening to the trends that people have. You, you want to be able to understand your camera and get the most out of it. And, and once you actually understand what the numbers are in the camera, you can use any, any mode you want to shoot in and know exactly how you're capturing the image. So, What are you shooting on right now? I'm using the, uh, the GX8, the Lumix GX8, and, and um, I'm happy with it. I mean, I've used the GH4s, I've used them all, obviously, over the years. And um, the GX8 is the newest and, you know, the, 20 megapixel new processor and I've been using it a lot I, I drove out here from New Jersey and used it all the way along and then I went into the Mojave Desert and I shot it out there and uh, I've been, been giving it putting it through the paces how about the glass what kind of, what's your favorite lens what's your go-to lens you know I have some of the Leica glass uh, that comes you know made for the Lumix camera but I have the the 12 to 35 millimeter 2.8 with image stabilization on, on the camera now and I use that a lot because it's it's equivalent to a 24 to 70 which that's what I used on any of my full frame gear so that's that's kind of my go-to lens and that's what I like about Panasonic too it's very adaptable you can take other glass and mix and match with it there's adapters so you have a Metabones adapter that you can put on the Panasonic camera so you can use your Canon and Nikon glass fully automatically or you can put old manual lenses on with no problem with adapters as well and since the camera offers, offers focus peaking, uh, manual focusing is not an issue at all. What's one of the classic mistakes kind of new photographers make? You know what, if you, if you use your camera on the automatic mode and you get a great picture, you want to try to get that picture again. And on the automatic mode, you, you don't know how you got it in the first place, so trying to recreate it is almost impossible. So take a class, learn how to use aperture and shutter and use them all and figure which one works the best for you whether aperture priority shutter priority manual whatever you like and as long as you know what you're doing and you know what the numbers do you're creating and be able to recreate images over and over 
Uh, are you doing a lot of your color correction uh, in post, or are you doing it within the camera? You know, I, I, the camera does a great job. Uh, and that's another thing that people talk about all the time, about shooting JPEG versus RAW and all that stuff. So, so you have the option to do both. Now, I enjoy shooting black and white. Uh, I like black and white. Now, I'll shoot black and white, and I'll dial it into my camera. I'll shoot a high-res JPEG, but I'll also shoot a RAW file to have the RAW file. But most of the time, I like the way the black and white comes out in the JPEG. I can email it and I can have big prints made. I mean, I had a gallery of 35 inch square prints that were shot directly out of the camera and emailed from the desert. So, you know, it all depends on what you're looking to do. I mean, I don't like to spend a lot of time in post-production because it takes away from me being out making photographs. Now, you, you're experienced. You've been doing this for a long time. Um, where are you putting all this? content, all this great photography, are you, is that on a website, do you share it on Instagram, well, I, I, are you in the social scene? Probably, uh, social media, I have several Facebook pages, I have a, a Tumblr page, uh, WordPress blog, uh, I put a lot on Instagram, uh, Twitter, um, so social media is a big part of where I put it, and you know, of course storing everything, and occasionally I will make prints so that I can... When I teach a class or I lead a workshop, I like to be able to physically show someone what you can accomplish in your camera without them worrying about having, you know, super expensive glass and, and running out and having to get the best of the best. You need to learn how to use what you have first and then if you want to upgrade, you know, go for it. All right, well, where can someone go and find your work? Uh, if you look, just look up Rick Garrity on Instagram and uh, or Twitter or, or on Facebook, and you'll you'll find just about everything. If you just Google, you know, Rick Garrity. Uh, since I travel everywhere, I love to drive, so I post stuff from everywhere, you know, and odd places, from truck stops everywhere, to the desert, whatever. So yeah, I mean, feel free. I, I love to I love to have people you know check it out, and I, I love sharing work with everybody and sharing ideas. One of the greatest things about photography is, is sharing and getting ideas from other photographers. Okay, we've been spending a little time with Lumix Luminaire, Rick Yardy. Rick, thanks for coming by. Hey, thank you. My pleasure.